All right, guys, I'm gonna try filming this sideways because it does YouTube format better. But I wanted to let you guys know the way that I incubate my quail eggs, okay? So this is super important to know because one of the most common questions I get asked when people want to start hatching their own quail eggs is what incubator do you recommend? Something very, very, very crucial and important to know is that answer is going to vary based on a few different things. One is personal preference, two is price, and three is climate. And I don't just mean whether you're humid, you're in the desert, I mean altitude too. So for example, my Shire Farm has done incubator reviews. Love him, Zach's one of my homies, we're tight, okay? You can go watch his incubator reviews and he will give you a rundown of his hatch rate and the features he liked on, on several different incubators in various different price ranges, right? And it's super good information to know. However, the important thing to also note is I think one of the ones he did was a Nurture Right 360. The dome one, not overly expensive. I think it's 160, 180, something in that price range. Not too bad as far as incubators and a smaller one. I think it can hold 40 quail eggs, maybe something like that. Um, that one works really good in a lot of climates that are more moist and lower altitude, I've noticed. So they Nurture Right 360 works great for people in Ohio. It probably would work great for people that are more east. I am in Utah. I am in central Utah, so it's not as high as altitude as other places. And it's not as hot or as dry as maybe like Arizona or Nevada. However, the Nurture Right 360, in my experience, has not worked super great where I am at. I have had friends in other states that it works great for. Um, I have just had a lot of really difficult time keeping the humidity stable, which is really, really important, especially at the end when the eggs are in lockdown. So that is important to know when you're choosing an incubator. Now I will tell you how I do it here. And if you are in Utah, you can do this too, or you can do a variation of several different things. Um, Ultimately, if you want to be cheap, which I would recommend starting out when you're, um, I would get local eggs if possible, start small, and don't spend a ton of money on hatching eggs if you haven't hatched a lot before. Um, because it's, you know, I mean, it's like a 50% average when you ship in eggs to begin with. So here's what I do. Now, this was not always like this, but now this is what I do. I have a 1502 GQF Sportsman Incubator. It's a big cabinet incubator. It has three shelves and a bottom tray for hatching. They also make, uh, I don't know if it's like a 1505 or something, but they have a hatcher version of it as well. So I don't incubate more than two, 300 eggs at a time, which is about one shelf worth. So what I do is I take the eggs, put them on shelf number one, and start the turner. The next week, I take more eggs, I put them on shelf number two. The third week, I take the eggs that are going in lockdown off the top row, and I put eggs on the bottom row. And I just keep doing that so that every week I'm hatching more eggs and I'm incubating more eggs. The big GQF is expensive and it is a pain in the butt to clean. So I do no, I no longer uh, hatch eggs in that incubator. I only incubate eggs in that incubator. So I just make sure the water's full, make sure the turner's on and keep it at the same temperature all the time. When I am ready to lock down the eggs and get them to stop turning, I take them out, I candle them, and then I put them in my bathroom in a very cheap, little giant styrofoam incubator. That is what I use just to hatch the eggs in. So little giant 
incubator, the little styrofoam box. It is very cheap, especially if you don't get the turner that goes with it. So I take that puppy, I put all the eggs that are candled and ready to hatch, dump them in there, crank up the humidity to like 70, like 65, 70, and then I let them hatch. And they make a huge dusty mess. And then I take the bottom of that sucker, I take it outside, I spray it with the hose and some non dish soap, air it out, put it back. And then a few days later, grab eggs again and hatch some more. And the great news is that um, when it's kind of crappy and it's not looking its best and you need another one, it is like 20 bucks to buy a new top styrofoam and bottom styrofoam. And I know this because I had taken my bottoms of my um, little giant incubators and sprayed them, dish soaped them, and I was letting them sit out in the sun to dry. And my, chick my chickens and my ducks pounced on them. They're free range. They pounced on them and decided to eat all the styrofoam. And so when I went out a couple hours later, I had like 20 ducks and like five chickens. They had eaten it down to where it was just the bottom. So we call that in the quail community, those who know and love me call that a Kelly moment. <laughs> so um, I had a Kelly moment and chickens munched and munched my incubator. So this week I am hatching in my GQF and I'm not happy about it because it's a hot mess to clean and I got to blow everything out and it's just, ugh. but um, I did order for 40 bucks. I got the top and bottom two new styrofoam sets and um, yeah, so in a couple weeks I will be hatching in the Little Giants again, but that is what I do. I do a combination of two. I have one incubator that's really nice for incubation and a couple little small little giants that usually a hundred bucks or less and that's what I hatch in. So, I would tell you, when you ask me, I'm not going to tell you if you're brand new to quail and you haven't hatched a lot to invest in a GQF. I am not going to tell you to do that. I don't think it's a good idea. I don't think that you should go big or go home when you're just starting out with anything because you're just, it's just not a great idea. You like, you know, so you might, I doubt it very much, but I was going to say, you might hatch some eggs and then be like, you know, it's not my thing. I doubt it. Doubt it very much. However, a lot of people, I think, jump the gun and they get really excited and they're like, I'm going to hatch all these chicks and I'm going to sell all these chicks because there's a lot of demand. Is there, though, where you're at? Something to think about because um, I've done this in my Are My Quail or Can My Quail Be Profitable playlist. Um, and it's important, I think, not to like go crazy and go overboard. I would start out small, do what you need to sustain your family, and then maybe get a little more birds and then start um, selling the extra eggs, hatching the extra eggs. Don't hatch a ton of eggs. If you're not eating the meat and you do not have a source for getting rid of all those birds, because I think a lot of people do that. And then you're stuck with a huge incubator or a bunch of little incubators and a bunch of birds. And it's just kind of not fun. Um, it, it can be kind of a mess. So I would start small, but if you're watching this video and you're like, gee, I wonder how Kelly incubates her eggs. Big GQF 1502 Sportsman. They're like over a thousand dollars. So I wouldn't invest in that right off the bat. I only use it to incubate eggs unless there's a situation like this week when my chickens ate my incubator. And um, so I only use it to incubate and then I have lots of space and I don't hatch. I mean, it can hold like 900 quail eggs and I'm not gonna hatch that many at once ever, ever. <laughs> Cause I do not have that much room to brood that many chicks. And I do not ever sell that much at once. That's, a lot of birds and so I usually do two 300 eggs hatch when the 200 250 somewhere in there and then the next week do the same thing and I hatch in little giants you can also do GQF has a hover baiter it's a small styrofoam thing I just think they're easy to clean and they're cheap that's 
my recommendation is something that is easy to clean and cheap. I think the styrofoam ones tend to do a little bit better in the um, climate that I'm in, especially if you keep it in an inner room in your house. Don't put any incubator by a window, like anywhere where there's drafts or anything like that, because you're just going to have a hard time keeping heat temperature and humidity. Um, so I have mine in my bathroom, just on the bathroom counter. I have a long bathroom counter. Um, it is honestly a long enough counter. I could have double sinks, but I don't. I just have one sink. So to the side of it, I just keep the incubator in there. It's an inner room of the house with no windows. And so it keeps the temperature well. And that's what I do. So hopefully it helps somebody out there. Um, I think the GQF company is great. I think that the little giant company is great to work with. Um, they are American customer service people. Um, so, and so is GQF. So you can call. Um, and they're very easy to work with. They send you replacement parts. They have people that will troubleshoot with you over the phone. Brincia or Brincy, I'm not sure how you say it. I call them Brincia, but they're also pretty good. 